Hi, my name is Robin, and welcome to my first attempt at a podcast about knitting and sewing and occasionally crochet. Um, I am a 50 year old mom of three boys, two of whom are pretty much out of the nest. I have one son, 23, and one son who's 20 and a son who's 16 and still at home. He'll be a junior in high school next year. My full-time job is as a high school math teacher, and so we are now enjoying the first day of summer. I'm coming to you on June 21st, um, and I am on summer break. So when I turned 50, I decided to make myself a list, a bucket list of things I might wanna do because I'm, uh, I've hit that age where it's sort of like, ah, life's half over and <laughs> um, time to have a midlife crisis. So this is my midlife crisis. I'm, I'm doing a knitting blog. Um, so I tried to think of the things that I wanted to do and one of the things that I put on my list was to um, try um, doing a knitting podcast. So when my boys were young, I stayed at home with them and one of my guilty pleasures at that time when they were napping was to look at knitting blogs and there was a whole uh, knitting community and it was fun to get to know bloggers that were online um, through their blog posts and I and really enjoyed that community and then at one point um, Ravelry came along and Ravelry kind of took um, that whole blogging thing in a different direction many people abandoned their blogs which is kind of sad because I you know I wonder what happened to um, to them um, on the other hand, I love Ravelry. Ravelry is a wonderful resource and I enjoy um, being a part of the groups and the forums. It's a little different though than um, ha having that list of blogs you go check. And so what I found um, in the last year and a half or so is that I really enjoy having that list of knitting podcasts that pop up on YouTube. And I thought, gosh, I'd really like to try to be a part of that community. So put it on my list. 50 years old, this is my bucket list, and then um, I was watching, I believe it was the Grocery Girls um, podcast for their um, podiversary, their one year um, podiversary, where I believe it was Jody said, if you've ever thought about doing it, you should just do it. Okay, so I'm going to blame this on them. I've decided to just do it, give it a try, and see what happens. I really think I'm just going to talk about what I'm knitting and the projects that I'm doing because I'm, I'm not a yarn dyer so I don't have yarn to sell and I'm not a bag maker, I don't have bags to sell um, and I am a pretty busy person <laughs> uh, 10 months out of the year when I'm teaching so who knows how regular I can do this. I also have a lot of noisy boys around all the time so taking advantage of the fact that my guys are hiking in the mountains and um, I think you can hear, if you hear a strange noise in the background, there's a bullfrog in our little pond um, right off of our porch who's making some interesting noises. Um, anyway, so it's summer in the south and it's warmish, but um, I felt like I, this was the best light that I had. Um, it's been kind of an overcast day, but we have a little bit of sun, and so I thought I would try it and see while I don't have boys to feed or take care of um, or interrupt me with 6,000 requests for things. And so let's just dive right in. I'm going to first talk about um, some recently finished projects. So I've had some projects on the go that um, pick up from time to time, but in the beginning of May, my, um, half of my classes are seniors, and they are part of, I'm, I teach IB math, and they start taking their IB diploma exams, and as a result, I suddenly have a 50% drop in the load of courses I'm teaching, and a little more time, so May was a great time to pick up and start finishing some projects. So, I finished a couple pairs of socks. This first pair of socks are some plain vanilla, well, vanilla-ish socks um, that are made with 
uh, Croy Sock Yarn in the Bramble colorway that I actually got a gift certificate for a local craft shop from my junior students at the winter holidays. And so I picked this yarn out um, with it. They know I like to knit and they like to make fun of my Friday knit socks. I wear, um, Friday is our dress down day and I can wear funky looking socks with my, uh, my blue jeans and my school uh, staff shirt. And so in the winter I wear wool socks on that day and I thought these looked fun and a little bit crazy. They are not identical socks. They're pretty close, but they were made from two separate balls. And I didn't care if they were matchy-matchy because that sort of makes, that's just sort of the fun of it. So they're close, but they're not exact. And I, um, I really love, my favorite method of knitting is um, toe-up. I like to do magic loop, toe-up, and the last couple of pairs that I've done that way, I have done two at a time. So um, there's a blog called Heidi Bears um, where there's a great tutorial. Um, I think it's called Heidi Bears Two at a Time Toe Up Sock Tutorial. And she goes through how to cast on and how to do the heel in several different blog posts. And that was very helpful. And I really enjoy that because voila, when you're done, you have two socks. Um, you do, of course, need to have your yarn separated into two balls. So if you're knitting with just one ball of yarn, then that's you have to decide how you're going to deal with that. In any case, um, I just knit plain up, following the pattern as she has written. And then when I got up to the top, I did a rib. Um, I think it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and two. So six knit, two purl rib at the top for some extra stay up power and these are going to be great warm socks and they'll be fun because I will be able to show my juniors that this was courtesy of them and their thoughtfulness this year. I started these as part of the Grocery Girls Sock Bash. I don't remember if it was in February <laughs> and didn't finish them in February. Uh, not even sure I got one sock done in February. So now I have a pair and I have entered them in the Yarn Hoarders um, knit along called Free All the House Elves where you finish up pairs of socks and you get to enter them in her um, knit along. So the second pair of socks that I have um, I fell in love with on a, at a display at my local yarn shop. And these are the Alfric socks by Rachel Coopy. And I'm not entirely sure how well the focusing on this works. This is all new to me. This is the back of the pattern because um, I don't want to give away um, any of the instructions. But this is a pattern called Alfric, A-L-F-R-I-C-K, um, by Rachel Coopy of Coop Knits. And I loved it, again, because of how quirky and different wearing two different coordinating socks would be. So I chose to knit them in purple and gray. So here's the purple and gray one and here's the its opposite partner and these aren't on a on a sock block or anything and it makes it look like I have really fat ankles but they fit really well. Maybe I do have fat ankles. Um, but this is the first time I've ever done a color work sock, and it was just fascinating. I enjoyed it so much. Um, there are floats inside, um, but they're not long floats. So I'm hoping that it's not going to be too much of a problem um, putting them on or off. I have noticed that when I go to wash them, my rings will catch on the float, so I have to be careful when I went to block them and, and turn them out and rinse, you know, that sort of thing. But um, it's, it's a lovely pattern and um, very well written. I did make one mistake. So I believe with the purple one, you have this beautiful heel. Hope you can see that, which looks nothing like 
the heel on the other sock because I think I did this one inside out. But you know what? If I hadn't told you, you wouldn't know it. And I don't care. Um, I have precious little time to indulge myself in these things to warrant pulling it back out for something that will work just fine. I don't think I'll notice the difference either way. Um, I've worn them um, in the house and my feet don't mind at all. So super fun to knit, a well-written pattern. Um, I did use the Coop Knits, Coop Knits Socks yeah, yarn that the pattern is written for. Um, and I have all my details on Ravelry. I am the flock on Ravelry, T-H-E-F-L-O-C-K. It's a play on my last name, which happens to be Lamb. So um, when I was younger, raising my three boys, it felt like I had a flock of little lambs. And so um, I became the flock, and um, that's my username on Ravelry, the flock. So the details about the yarn color would be on Ravelry. These are really fun. And again, two new pairs to wear on Fridays in the winter. Certainly not now. Um, I have a whole bunch of hummingbird feeders on my porch. And there are a pair of hummingbird feeders down at the other end. You may be able to hear them. They may buzz by us from time to time. Um, they're having an argument at the other end of the porch over a feeder. They're very territorial. So the last thing I'm going to show as a recently finished object is a sweater. This is the Beld, B-E-L-D, Beld cardigan. Um, and I forget... Ooh, I forget the designer of the pattern. But it was actually a craftsy kit. And um, that I purchased. The yarn is Cloudborn Fiber Yarn, and it was the Maze Heather colorway. The yarn was a little disappointing in terms of the heatheredness. I thought it would have more um, more variation in the color. And when I got the yarn balls, they are when I got the skeins of yarn, it seemed very one one tone, um, very solid rather than heathered. But um, after knitting it up, and when you get it in the bright sun, when I photographed some of the pictures for um, my Ravelry project page, that's when you see that there is some white and some variation in the color of the yarn. Um, it's just very subtle. It's more subtle. Than I thought, but it is a very lovely honey color, and so I um, found it a very easy knit. This would be a great sweater for a first time sweater knitter in the sense that it's simple. It's knit, you start here at the collar band and you knit it down, um, knit the whole thing, and then you um, finish with the sleeves. So this is all knit in the round. There's no seaming to be done. And the pattern, this lacy pattern down here, is very simple. Um, easy to memorize, easy to learn, and everything else is just plain knitting. So it would be an, a great sweater for somebody who was n new to garment knitting in terms of the simplicity of the pattern. It creates a very elegant, classic um, style as well, I think. So it's, I, I'm looking forward to wearing it. I'm not going to put it on today because it's warm here in the south of the United States. However, um, I've gotten spoiled recently with patterns that have been really well done. I've done a, um, a sweater uh, for my husband that was a Brooklyn Tweed, uh, Michelle Wang pattern um, with Brooklyn Tweed yarn. And the patterns are so well written from how, what type of cast on to use, what type of cast off to use, um, all these tips and hints. And I felt like this pattern was missing some of those things. So if you were a new knitter, 
you might need extra assistance, even though it's a great, the techniques aren't difficult, but it'll just say cast on. And you might not know what would be the best cast on, so you might have to look that up or get your local yarn shop people to help. Our local yarn shop people are fabulous, and um, or a knit group, somebody, an experienced knitter who could maybe make a suggestion about the cast on or the bind off or things of that nature. But anyway, more details on this cardigan are up on my Ravelry page, and I'm really looking forward to the fall. Um, it's a lovely, lovely autumn color, I think, and I believe I will get a lot of wear out of it. Okay, so those are things that I finished this spring. And so now I'm going to talk about some of the things I'm working on. I recently finished pairs of socks. I entered at different months in the Grocery Girl Sock Bash 2017 and did not finish. So they went instead to um, the Free All the House Elves Knit Along with the Yarn Hoarder podcast. I'm determined that this month I am going to get a pair of socks done. So my June socks for the Grocery Girls Sock Bash Knit Along and also to be entered into Free All the House Elves at the Yarn Hoarder podcast are a pair of socks for my husband. So he was in the Netherlands in December and bought some yarn to give me as a Christmas gift. And one of the things he bought was a Zauber ball, a crazy Zauber ball, which is actually German yarn. Um, and he brought me back this one in the Herbst Wind colorway. And here's currently what's left of the ball. And I um, googled, I, I didn't google, I looked up on Ravelry the yarn and um, was looking for different ideas for socks made out of this yarn. And I came across a striped set of socks and I am following their lead and making him a pair of um, stripey socks and he has very long feet <laughs> so this is the first sock I've knit for him and it did involve a lot of hey honey come here can you pull this on the pattern um, that I so the inspiration photo on Ravelry I followed their advice and this is all linked on my Ravelry page, so I'll have to put some detailed notes together for you about that. Um, but they basically used a vanilla sock pattern toe down, uh, top down. I haven't done top down in a while. I had to do top down for these. That's the way the pattern was written. So I used um, some carbons, uh, double pointed needles to cast on. Um, these are my carbons that I use to knit these. And I started by casting them on, on this and then decided to go to my carbons uh, magic loop because I just I like how fast the magic loop goes. But I have had to do both of these pairs top down, which is not my normal method. I started toe up and I got to the heel and could not figure out how in the world to make the slip knit kind of heel which I think is heavy duty and I think my husband needs that um, for longer wearing. I couldn't figure out how to do that and maintain the stripes and everything and it became it was a mess and so I ripped that whole thing out which broke my heart and started top down. And got one done and today's June 21st and I have this much of the second one done I'm hoping by the end of the week to have it to the heel my husband has two different sized feet 
and the there one is significantly shorter than the other so I will have him try it on this is what we did with the other one kept trying it on kept trying it on. how many more stripes I'd estimate how many more stripes and then I actually over knitted and had to rip back now this one hasn't been blocked because it is stripes it has the has the issue of the where you join um, because it's when we knit with stripes um, it's more of a spiral when you're changing colors than it is one stripe and another stripe so I'm hoping I did the the jogless stripes um, where you when you after you knit the first round of the new color you then pull up the stitch below it and then in the second round you knit those two together I did that and I think when it gets blocked um, they will look a little less a little less like there's a jog there but I haven't blocked these yet I was going to block them at the same time um, this one's actually looking pretty good right now in terms of the the jogless stripe idea but the the person and I, I should have written this down note to self. Uh, I need to write down some notes before I do this. Um, the person whose inspiration um, I'm following has a link in their Ravelry project notes to this jogless join. It is in a different language, but um, it, there's a video with it that you, if you follow the video, it's, it's not hard at all, even though it's a different language. And all of that stuff is linked through my Ravelry page. So I'm using the Zauber Ball, and then I'm using Coop Knits Socks yeah, in the same gray that I used for my Alfred Socks, which is called Danburite. It's color 105 Danburite. And it's a fine superwash merino wool nylon. I'm hoping that these don't stretch too much when I block them because right now they've they've got a, a nice tight fit um, so if they bloom a little bit it's okay but I don't want them to bloom a lot because we worked pretty hard to make this a good fit what I'm hoping is when I get to the end that there will be some of this left and I have a whole nother skein of the gray and then I'm going to make a pair of socks for me with the leftovers. I don't know that I'll have enough. I'll have to weigh it. I don't know if I'll have enough to make a full set of striped socks. But I may just knit the foot in the plain color and then stripes at the top. Or I may do skinnier stripes. I don't know. These stripes are four, four rows deep. In any case, the Hubbler loves them. Says he loves them. So we'll see if he wears them. And if they keep his feet warm. And how long it takes him to wear a hole in them. Alright, so that's my first on-the-go project that I'm really trying to get done quickly. The second one, so summer hits and I am frantic to do any and everything that I can do. Um, creatively, because it feels like for 10 months I've had to pull in you know, rein it in. And so now I kind of have that ADD, knitting ADD, where I just want to cast on all the projects and get them all done. And of course, that can't happen because life has to continue to go on. We have a garden, we have some lawn mowing, we have blueberries that need picking, I have a boy that needs to get to baseball practice. All of those things are going to take up time. Plus, I have a fair amount of schoolwork to do in the summer. So how much of this I actually get done, I don't know. But right now, it's all knitting all the time, it seems like, because... I'm so excited to get to some of these things. So I have a sweater that I'm not going to show that I'm working on for my husband, but it kind of it's good plain knitting that I can do at baseball games and things like that. So if we do any traveling, I need car knitting. That's something simple. I'm saving that for when I need to do that. Um, so I'm working on a sweater for me that I've had the yarn for a while, and I'm finally going to get around to doing it. I fell in love with this sweater when I went to the Carolina uh, Fiber Fest 
and I didn't go this year, so it was last year, and I purchased the pattern then. It's called a Lady Brunswick Sweater, and it's done by Joan Beebe for SS Knits as part of, it's part of a whole collection um, that she calls her Mountains to Sea Collection, and we have a thing here in North Carolina called the Mountains to Sea Trail. In fact, um, right down the road from me, there's a large park that has part of the Mountains to Sea Trail on it. Um, our river walk is supposed to connect pieces of it, which currently, because we've had a great deal of rain, is flooded and I can't go. So I thought while well, my husband and my son were backpacking this week in Virginia that I would be taking the dog down there in the morning and doing the river walk. It's completely closed because it is so flooded. Um, fortunately, we're high enough that that's not an issue, although our, we have a large pond, not the pond that the frog is peeping in, but a large pond um, and it's over its banks. It's quite obnoxious how much rain we've had. We're going to mildew this summer, apparently. In any case, this is the Lady Brunswick sweater. And I, I it, this isn't the best color picture, but I think it's just the most beautiful sweater. I saw it in person on display, and I have been wanting to knit it ever since. Um, it has this great... Latvian braid detail here at the shoulder and the neck and then at the hem at the bottom which is a new to me technique and this is this is what I was mentioning earlier there are this pattern is so incredibly well written it is very thick and I'm not going to show it to you for obvious reasons but there is a whole set of tutorial links in this pattern that links you to videos that show you the techniques that you need to be successful with the sweater. So I've never done a Latvian braid before, and I was so excited to try it. Get my tangle of yarns out of here. And here is where I'm at. Again, I don't know how anything about lighting. I, I think this is kind of blowing out a little bit, but um, if you're really curious, you could go to my Ravelry Project page and see better pictures of this. But you start here at the bottom. It has a Latvian braid and then this ribbing. And then I made a mistake here. This is supposed to be, um, I think this is supposed to be ribbed here too. And somehow I missed the directions you purl one, one row and then you do something else the other row and I missed those directions. But it was supposed to be slightly different. I think it'll be fine. And then we're, I'm now at this part. There's another Latvian braid here. And now I'm at this part. And I just... <gasps> I'm having so much fun with it. I love the yarn. The yarn is Malabrigo. And... Um, it's Malabrigo Arroyo. yarn. I, is this backwards for you guys? Uh, oh well, that's what it says, Malabrigo Arroyo. And I'm using two different colors. The main color is, I think it's called Indecito. And it's got blues and greens and slightly purplish blues and a, a little flecks of lemony green. It's just... Oh, it's lovely and it's so buttery soft it's fabulous and then the other color is called Sandbank and this is what I'm using for the Latvian braid now I opted to go with a light color for my contrast color instead of a darker color um, so I hope um, I think it I think it's okay I hope I don't regret it um, that there's a light contrast instead of a dark contrast there. I think it shows up well enough. I think you can see it. But I, I'm, I'm really pleased with how it's going so far. So this is the back. You do the back first. And I think I've got about 10 inches in the, in the back done. Um, it knits pretty quickly. And I just, 
I find I enjoy knitting it because, you know, I every time a new color comes along, oh, there's a little denim blue, and then there's a purpley blue, and then there's a lime green, and I, oh, every one is my favorite while I'm knitting it, and then before I get bored with it, there's another color, so it's very fun. I am doing the thing where I'm alternating skeins because it's hand-dyed yarn. I did not alternate down here at the bottom because this edge here is a finished edge. There's a slit at the bottom that starts here at the Latvian braid and goes down. So since this was a finished edge, I didn't want the traveling yarns. Um, I, I wanted it just to be clean. So I didn't do it here, but I don't see any noticeable pooling or anything that bothers me. And now I'm alternating. We'll see how it turns out because all of the skeins, they, they look pretty much alike until you really get to looking at them and then they have some, some differences. So we'll see how it goes. But so far, it's just so much fun. And I hope I can finish that this summer. So this is the little Lady Brunswick sweater um, by Joan Beebe for SS Knits. An easy living three quarter sleeve tunic designed by Joan Beebe for the Mountains to Sea collection. And um, Brunswick County is a county in North Carolina for which the sweater is named. So that's an interesting little tidbit there. I will put that away. I'm sort of alternating between the sock and for my husband and the sweater right now most of the time. Hoping to get those finished. All right, so then I also have a scarf. So I have knitted scarves in the or shawls in the past. And I like them, and I wear them at home in the winter time, especially when I'm working in my office and I get cold. I can wear them there. But you feel a little granny-like if you go out in public with those kinds of shawls. And so I've really liked the trend lately for knitting the shawls that get worn more like a scarf. So I'm knitting a Linau, Linnea, Linau shawl. Um, that I can then wear as an accessory at school. And this is a very interesting pattern, which I didn't bring the details for. Um, but I'm enjoying knitting this. This is a very simple lace pattern to memorize and then a ever growing sort of knit section that just gets bigger. So it's an easily memorized I don't have to have the pattern right next to me all the time project that I'm enjoying, but it's not getting my full attention. So I'll probably talk about this again some other time in more detail, but it's also something I'm working on and on my Ravel, oh, the Linnell Shawl by Judy Marples. I do have the details here. And I like this ability to just, you know, throw it around. This yarn is very, um, very thin and light, so I don't feel like it will be so hot. Um, we do get cold here in North Carolina, but my room at school is overheated. It is so hot. And I would like something that's seasonal and appropriate to wear, but that isn't so warm because at a certain points in the day, I'm going to have to take it off because the heat runs in my classroom way too much. So those are the three things I'm trying to work on the most. And I want to get them out of the way because I got some fun stuff that... I'm looking forward to doing. Um, this is just my, my yarn for my Lady Brunswick sweater. So, we have a great local yarn shop. Um, the Hillsboro Yarn Shop is my local yarn shop. Um, and it's run by some wonderful people, very, very helpful. And they've hosted two events recently that I've gone to and really enjoyed. The first one was a needle tasting, 
where you go on a weekend morning for a couple of hours and you get to uh, sample the different kinds of needles. That's where I got my carbons needles for my sock knitting. I'd heard a lot about them on different podcasts and thought I'd like to give them a try. And this was a great opportunity because those were some of the needles. They, they had the cube, the cube, the needles that are um, square shaped. They had a whole bunch of different needles that you could try. And um, I think that's really fabulous that you have, you've got to, you know, play with them and see how they worked for you. And some people liked one versus the other and you knew what you were getting into before you took them home. Because needles are kind of an investment. And at some point, I will show you bits of my needle collection. Um, my dad's mother, huge knitter. And so when she passed away, my cousins knew that I was the only one in the family that still knit, and they sent me all of her needles. So I have her needles. I have needles from... Um, Various other relatives, people find out that you, you knit and somebody passes away and they say, oh, would you like the needles? So I have a large collection of vintage needles, needles that, um, that I have used, but it's interesting how the knitting industry is now modifying, changing things, coming up with better solutions like the circular needles, the magic loop needles. Um, those are when you have a pair that has a great join on the end, then your knitting is so super fast. So, I struggle with, do I really need to buy more new needles? Because I have a gazillion of them. <laughs> I could probably find what I need in my grandmother's stash. Or, do I get the tool that makes my life easier? So I did buy the Carbons needles. The other thing they had recently was a Brooklyn Tweed yarn tasting. So they are a Brooklyn Tweed um, seller. And we got to go and we had little samples of all of the major yarns that Brooklyn Tweed has out right now. Shelter and Arbor and um, Loft, which is the one I'm using for my husband's sweater that I'll talk about in another time. And they had the new yarn veil. So, in one of these bags, I have veil, which I have already caked up. I bought three different colors because I'd like to make a three color shawl of some sort. I have no idea what shawl to make. There they are. The, um, there's the gray color, and then these are, this is also grayish, but it has a green tinge to it. So in the right light, it has a little green cast to it. This is called Norway. That's the one with a slight green to it. This gray one is Heron. And this, I think, is Snow... Thaw. I think it had something to do with snow. It's called Thaw. And I think the three colors go well together. And I think it'll make a pretty shawl. I just have to figure out which one. I also got some Brooklyn Tweed loft for myself. So I'm making my husband a loft sweater. I'm making him the Longfellow sweater by Michelle Wang. And now I'm going to, for myself, I'm going to do the Towns pullover which I will show you once I get started. So I went to my um, local yarn shop and enjoyed the yarn tasting and enjoyed the yarn discount and got some yarn to make a, another kind of lacy, loose um, shawl accessory. So that I hope to get to this summer as well. All right, so that's what I'm working on. Um, I thought I'd do, um, one more segment, but I want to share something fun that happened to me recently, and I need my sweater back for that. Um, one thing that 
was exciting that happened to me recently was I won a giveaway. Um, so my favorite podcasts, I, um, I was talking about the podcast. So I, I think I started with Kelly at Celtic Cast On. I think hers was one of the first podcasts I watched. And then somewhere I got, um, I started watching Jules at So Sweet Violet. And then I think through Jules, I found Sam at Betsy Makes. And so Celtic Cast On, So Sweet Violet, Betsy Makes, and then Yarn Hoarder and Grocery Girls were sort of the very first ones. And all of those people pointed at those different podcasts. So somehow that's where I found all those podcasts. And those are my favorites. Um, go to at, at the start. That's what got me interested. In any case, Sam at Betsy Makes was running a um, giveaway uh, that she called uh, Random Acts of Kindness. Um, so she had been donated some yarn and she wanted to give it away as an act of kindness. And we all put in the thread on the Ravelry group different um, random acts of kindness that either we had done or had been done for us. And my comment was about our random acts of kindness club at our school. We have a random acts of kindness club at our high school. And it's not unusual to come in at Valentine's and have Valentine's and all the teacher boxes made by the Rack Club. At the end of the school year, they had the students sign a big banner thanking the bus drivers, and then they served chocolate chip cookies to the bus drivers on that one of the last days of school as a thank you to them. We can come into school and there will be post-it notes on all the lockers that have kind sayings on them like smile or I hope today goes well or um, you're wonderful and so that's nice. So we have this wonderful random acts of kindness group and that was my comment. And so when the random generator came around, my comment got pulled and I won the giveaway. So the giveaway was um, uh, some yarn. And the yarn comes from Down Sheepy Lane. And so if you watch Sam at Betsy Makes, you probably saw her. This is uh, Comfy Sock yarn. It's 80% uh, superwash merino and 20% nylon, and the colorway is berries, which I just love. And I'm very excited to make some socks out of this. I think I'm going to try to see if I can find some green yarn perhaps that will make for toes and heels that will match the little bits of green in here. I don't know. I'll have to see. But I was I was just so thrilled. And it was so kind of Sam to send it all the way from the UK to the United States. And in that same um, package, there's some new to me tea. This is sweet rhubarb tea, which I can't wait to use. And this cute little progress keeper that says handmade and it's waving at you right now maybe it will stop waving and you can see it so progress keepers are something I knew nothing about until I started watching podcasts um, stitch markers I know about and over the years I've made some of my own stitch markers which were dangling on my um, my shawl so I know about stitch markers I've made my stitch markers and I have purchased stitch markers different stitch markers for different reasons but progress keepers were not a thing I knew anything about and so I have one that came with a bag that I bought from Sam at Betsy Makes, which is just so pretty. And it has a little lamb progress keeper, which, as I've said before, that's my last name. So I haven't I haven't had the heart to take this off of here and actually use it, but I am using this one. So this is where I was 
at the start of last night. And I think it's kind of fun to see how much progress I've made, because sometimes it feels like you knit and you knit, and especially when you're in a long stretch. You don't feel like you're getting anywhere, but this kind of shows you how far you've gotten. And um, so I think that's kind of fun, and I like the little clasp. It makes it easy to put on the garment. And so it makes me feel like I've accomplished something. So that was a very exciting thing that happened to me, was to win that giveaway. And I look forward to doing something with the yarn from Down Sheepy Lane. So beautiful. And berries, right now we've got berries um, that we are harvesting here. We have about 10, 12 blueberry bushes um, that I'm picking blueberries from. And then we have wild blackberries everywhere. And the blackberries start off this kind of color before they turn deep purple, purplish black when they're ripe. Um, and the little flecks of green in there, I just think it's, I think it's genius, the color combination. And I love pink and I love green, so so excited. And I am a hot tea drinker. I, my husband is, is darling. And every morning he makes me a thermos of Earl Grey tea with cream for me to take to school and drink and get through my school morning with. And then in the evening it's often a uh, lemon zinger. That's my favorite tea in the evening is a lemon zinger. It's an herbal tea. Um, I'm not terribly adventurous when it comes to tea, but I do enjoy trying new things. So I'm looking forward to trying the rhubarb. Um, I would love to be able to grow rhubarb here. I think we're just a little too warm. It grows well up north of us. But I always buy rhubarb when it's in the grocery store in the early, in the spring. And I love rhubarb crumble or strawberry and rhubarb stuff. So I try to buy it once every year or so. Um, don't always get to it because you have to kind of dig around for it here. We live more up north than it would be in everybody's backyard. But I have to kind of dig around in the grocery store for it. So I don't always get it. Um, if I can ever figure out how to grow it here, I will. Because I love rhubarb. All right, so the other thing, um, one of the drawbacks about podcasts is that you watch what other people are doing and then you just want to do that as well. There are all the knit-alongs. I love the knit-alongs because I find that those help me. My belt cardigan, for example, um, was I participated in So Sweet Violet's uh, Be Along um, knit-along. And that was, you know, you just wanted to finish. You wanted to be a part of the group finishing by the deadline. And the same thing with the socks. It helps me. When I get home, especially when I get home from school in the evening and I'm tired, I don't want to, I think, eh, I'll just sit here and watch TV, but then I've wasted that time. So if I'm participating in a knit-along, it's making me get something done. So I watch the podcast to find out about the knit-alongs, and then you see what everybody's knitting, and you really want to do that. But we have recently cleaned out my grandmother's we cleaned out my grandmother's house when she downsized to a cottage. We cleaned out her cottage when she downsized to assisted living. We cleaned out assisted living when she had to go to the nursing home, and she will be 96 in July. And she was she was a Depression-era child, and she saved everything. So I have inherited a lot of vintage sewing stuff. I have a zipper for every occasion, um, many of them metal, old metal style zippers. I have um, fabric. I have projects that I've inherited that that she had half done that I have chosen to bring home. In addition to my grandmother, my husband had a grandmother, has had two grandmothers who um, both have had multiple moves and in those moves we have been gifted things. 
because again, I am, I, I sew and I knit and I crochet. So, um, and I'm one of the few in the family that does. So when they find that sort of stuff, people's leftover craft supplies, they bring it to me and say, Hey, would you like this? And I have to be real, real deliberate about what I'm taking and what I'm not. Because what I found is that, oh my goodness, my grandmother had so much stuff, so much unfinished stuff. And my, and then I've had to do the same thing for my mom. Oh my goodness. My mother had so many things started and never finished. So I'm hoping to avoid the temptation and just stick with the things I really want to knit and actually get them done. <laughs> That's a hard thing to do. Um, there's so much temptation out there on, on the podcasts. And you always think you're going to have more time than you end up having. Um, but in any case, I have a lot of vintage stuff, and I thought I would share that on the podcast from time to time, whether it's vintage sewing notions or vintage knitting stuff. Um, but today I chose a vintage crocheted item that I am not really sure, I believe, belonged to my great-grandmother. It was in my grandmother's stuff, and I think she told me at one point that it had belonged to my great-grandmother. I think this is a corset cover. Um, it's hand-sewn. Um, I'm trying to button it up so it's not flapping open. And... I imagine this was saved for special occasions or it was made toward the end of when they were wearing corsets because it doesn't have much wear and tear to it. When I show it to you, you'll be impressed by the effort that went into this corset cover. Could have just been, well, I, th I think that's what it was. I think it was a corset cover. But here is this wonderful article that I have. I don't I'm pretty sure my great-grandmother had nothing to do with the crocheting part of this. Um, she had, my great-grandmother was one of eight children that survived to adulthood, and well, she's one of 12 children, eight of whom survived into adulthood. My great-grandmother was born in 1897 in a little tiny town in Texas. Her parents were missionaries that were here from Germany to set up the Lutheran Church in uh, Texas. And she had an older sister who crocheted um, delicate handkerchief edgings and all sorts of stuff up until the day she died. She was crocheting when I was a small child, um, well into her 90s still. So I suspect that this was probably made for her, maybe by her sister. Don't know. But... I think you would have had a ribbon or some sort of tie to tie this closed at the top. There's a wasp that just flew by. Lovely. And then it has the buttons. And this part down here um, looks to have been machine sewn. Um, has a little bit of wear and tear, but not a lot. There's some little holes there. And I've hung on to this. What do you do with this stuff? It's pretty. I love it. I could probably wear it or alter it to wear it. But it's old and it's fragile. Do I wear it and enjoy it? And when it falls apart, then that's okay? Or do I save it because it's old and it's fragile and it's beautiful? I mean, that's the thing. And then it just gets passed on to the next person and never gets used. Um, I have done this kind of crochet before. I actually have some vintage pattern books that have these yokes in them. You can find reproductions on the internet, but these, I, these yoke patterns I had to think were pretty popular. And they were designed to be on the top of nightgowns or the top of these corset covers. They often have this sort of floral pattern or um, shamrock patterns or 
all sorts of different designs to them. And I know how much time it would have taken to make this, so I, I want to be respectful of that. On the other hand, it just sits in a trunk doing nothing. What's the better thing to do? And then I pass it on. I don't know that my son, well, I guess my sons could, I don't know, if they would care to inherit this sort of thing. That's always the dilemma. So I have, I have a bucket list of my own, which is to, to knit what I've got up, not to have so much in my stash that I can't get it done, and to know at some point when I can't do it anymore that I have to then give it away. Um, because, oh my goodness, my mother had so much fabric and so much thread and so yeah. much, and I have, I have saved thread that my grandmother had, silk button twist thread on little flat wooden spools um, that I'm sure is dry rotted. I don't think you can actually use it. Um, so these things do have a sell by date. <laughs> Fabric um, deteriorates, thread deteriorates. So that's always my dilemma. What do I save? What do I use and wear out and be happy and enjoy it while I do that and then let it go? Because I don't want my kids to have to go through what my husband and I have been going through in the cleaning out of my grandmother's stuff and my grandfather's stuff. I just kicked the table. Um, and my parents. We've just, I've just done some preliminary stuff with my parents. Um, they're both still living and my mother is paralyzed, so she can't sew or knit or crochet anymore. But she was hanging on to all that stuff, and there was a there was a recent need to go down and, and clear out space in the house. So I did that, and it was really difficult to go, hmm, does this fabric have any use left in it? She, she had stuff, baby fabrics from, you know, when I was an infant, which was 50 years ago. Um, that she had intended to make and never made, and then when my children were little, my children were all boys, so probably wasn't appropriate to use it then for, for my boys, um, or she didn't remember that she had it. I, I, there's stuff I know she didn't remember she had. Same with my grandmother, didn't remember that she had it. So anyway, I thought at the end of each podcast I would show you some vintage treasures that I have from my family, um, and ask you, what would you do? What would you do with this? Would you wear it and enjoy it? Would you preserve it? Would you upcycle it into something more useful, modern day? Because, you know, I'm not wearing corsets, but wear his pajamas, maybe. Um, in any case, what would you do? All right, so that's it. That's all I have for today. Uh, now I get the fun of trying to figure out what to do with these videos, and if you ever see it online, then you know I've figured it out. <laughs> and if you don't, well, you know, no harm, no foul. Anyway, um, you can find me on Ravelry as The Flock, and you can find me on Instagram as Willow Caroline. So that's it. That's where you can find me. Um, I'll see if I can figure out uploading this thing. And again, I'm blaming the grocery girls for this, with some encouragement from Kelly at Celtic Cast On, so this is her fault too. And maybe I'll be back. We'll see. Thanks for joining me today. Bye.